Hello, my Spurries. It's Keisha Simsima, and I am back again with another video. Guys, this is going to be a two part video because it's going to be a long story. And this is regarding my spiritual warfare that I am currently going through. And it's been going on for, I would say, going on almost two years. Not sure it's when it's going to end, but I just wanted to share it with you while I'm going through it at the moment. If you guys wanted to hear what it's all about, stay tuned. Okay, guys, so it started from... I started working at a job and um, everything was going well. So everything that I asked for, it was like a dream job. So everything that I asked, asked God for, I got the amount of money that I was looking for. I received being in control of my schedule, working from home. When I, like I'll get up and I don't feel like going in. So I schedule myself. I'm working from home. I only go in whenever I have appointment with customers or, ha or if I have an office meeting. And I was like full of life, full of light and very loved by the people that I was working with until, until the devil decided that he wants to dabble in what was going on and started where one of my co-worker, she didn't like service guy that was working with us and that guy and I became friends. I didn't see the need for me not to talk to this person because I didn't have any problem with him. So I guess she was having an issue with the fact that I was speaking to this this guy, this service guy. We worked together, we're co-workers. We seen each other for eight hours a day. She, he didn't do anything to me. So we would talk and I noticed that she started to acting weird towards me. And then it looks like she found out that I was even getting more pay than her. And she was originally in the position that I had and then she moved on to another position. And so they hired me and I told them what I was worth. I have experience, she did not have experience at the time when she got the job. And she's really good at her work. But I had past experience so I knew how much this position pays. So anyways, she's been like carrying news saying stuff like once what well, i went on site and i walked into the site office and i overheard the site manager speaking to her on like on speakerphone and then she said something about oh the colored person So I closed the door and I left and I was like, I am the only black person that worked with that company. So I kind of knew she was talking about me and I felt bad and I left and I went to the office. I know um, one of the, um, the guys saw me that when I opened the door and I overheard the conversation and I closed it and I walk, walk away. So the site manager came to the office and he was like, and I, I, I knew he came there because he wanted to see if I was going to say something to him or if I was going to act a certain way towards him. He's trying to figure if I knew, if I heard the, the conversation. So I, I didn't say anything. I just act as if it was a normal day because I did not want them to feel like I was pulling the race card and I knew how these people are. So I let it go and I've been there working for a while, a while, a while and I noticed this person. Now that this guy that she didn't like that she wanted for me to stop speaking with quit, he left because of her and since he left now, I guess she, it seems to me that she wants someone to always pick on. So she started picking on me, picking on me, picking on me, trying to show me up, trying to do things. Like she knows that my weakness is a certain thing. Like for example, my weakness is, I would say I am not great at doing this thing that we call a frame inspection. And she would pick at me like whenever we're doing the staff frame, frame inspection, I'm in charge. And then she'll like just do things to show up my weakness 
it was bothering me until I wrote I wrote a, um, an email to to let the management team know what was going on that I was uncomfortable this I feel like this person has been picking on me and anyways as I sent that email 10 minutes after she called me um, I, I'm sorry if I'm if you feel like I'm picking on you I want us to start off a clean sleigh blah 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 and we had and and I was like okay cool but then it clicked to me that this girl have access to my email I just sent this email 10 minutes ago and she's able to call me not on her work first phone not on her work phone but on her personal phone and have this conversation with me so I guess she did that so that I couldn't trace back to her whatever it was anyhow I realized that she both her and the vice president at the company are really good friend and they talks a lot so when we they brought up we they call a meeting and I was there they didn't call me she wasn't there which I didn't like I would have loved for them to have her there so they had an individual meeting with us and I realized that the vice president was like oh I think that I didn't see her do certain things and I just think that you just you're just like a complainer Keisha yes that's what they call black people complainers because you're not you're supposed to take whatever happens sweep things underneath the rug and not talk about it so it was going and then now I started to re then they started to talk with other staff staff members and I realized that all these people started to look at me weird they're scared to talk to me because I don't know they probably feel like they don't want to say something to me and I get them in trouble or I call a meeting or I'll, I'll, I'll say that they're picking on me or I'll say that they're racist or whatever whatever so it was going on for a while so I fi find that they were picking on me and so it was getting to me it was getting to me I was praying about it I was like God and I started to like I have to put on this whole harm or I feel like I'm going to work I'm not happy after I feel like I literally have to put on the whole harm of God and to like literally like have the um the, the fruit of the spirit in front of me so that I would not be out of control I have to just remind myself I need to love I need to have joy I need to have peace I need to be gentle I need to be kind <laughs> self-control and all of that it was like all and, and guys when you're in a spiritual war warfare all of that is been shattered because if if how to detect you're in a spiritual warfare if you're losing your peace if you no longer have joy if you find yourself not being kind to people if you find yourself not being able to control yourself or if you find yourself not being able to to go through long suffering like huh, guys I, so I knew that I was going through um, a spiritual warfare and so they even the staff they all of them went on they went out for lunch they didn't say anything to me I was the only one sitting they all get up they go out they have their lunch they came back laugh talking with flowers in their hands and blah 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 so I felt left out I felt rejected and I, I, I try like normal people that I would talk to my my uh, manager and I had a really good relationship and one time I try I was like you know I went into his office and I like I feel like venting but I was just I, has nothing to do with this girl or whatever was going on in the office it has to do with my work and he was like um I'm I, I, I'm not here for anyone to 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 vent to just the attitude that he gave me and I sensed that he was scared to speak to me or they all were trying to gang against me to make me feel uncomfortable I felt they all, I it was I couldn't take it I honestly could not take it I couldn't take it I couldn't take it it went on for probably six months and I'm like god I can't take it no more I they tried it to put more work on me to do and I get the feeling that they're trying to say that I'm not doing my job so anyways I was doing my job the customers knew that I was doing my job anyways I couldn't take it I, I, I go I can't I cannot stay in a position where I am uncomfortable where I feel unwanted where I feel like rejected and where I feel like I am nobody and where I feel like I'm working given my 110% and I feel like I'm only given 5% because that's how they make me feel so I started I 
honestly find myself i usually have like a glass of wine before i go to bed and i find myself that i was drinking more and more and i'm like i'm not gonna become any alcoholic because of this workplace just so that i can numb my feelings so one night i prayed and i prayed and i'm like god i i don't think i can do this anymore i don't know if this is a sign that you're giving me to tell me it's time for me to move it's time for me to move i'm not sure if it's a t if it's a sign so i was up until around three o'clock that that night which is that morning and i wrote my i wrote a letter and resigned <laughs> after i sent that letter that night as i was going into my bed there's a voice audibly said to me no no and i was like god is that you did you just tell me I shouldn't have quit my job? And I felt that's what he was trying to say. No. You quit your job prematurely. Prematurely. I went to bed and I was sleeping. I've been getting a lot of vision. And it's I, for the last two years. And honestly, I would say for the last probably month. I haven't gotten that vi that vision but there's always animals attacking me in my vision or in my dream they attack me by my fingers other people will be there and I'm the only one that's been getting attacked by these animals so many spiritual like attacked in my sleep and I have to be fighting 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 these attacks every time I realize what's happening attacked in my fingers and I knew it's like there it's attacking my financial abilities my way of making money and so I quit my job and then I decided I had some money and then I'm like okay you know what I'm gonna start my own business which is a proper fate property management that I've started and I figure with the money that I have I will be able to survive on it for a year and hopefully within the year or you know closer to the end of the year i'll be able to um to 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 scale and something came up and i was told that i need to i need some money so i try to um get a loan to 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 cover whatever this is and um it never the loan never didn't come in time so or something was going on with the loan so i ended up I have to use the money that i had so I used everything that I had, everything that I had. There's, uh, and then I figured that that loan now would replenish what I use. Nope, 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 nope. Never go as planned. So yes, quit my job and now I'm broke, broke. And so I got some houses to rent and I was open. I counted up. I'm like, okay, all of these houses that I get to rent and to manage for that month, I should make about $11,000. Nope, 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 nope. My first appointment that I, that my first appointment for one of the homes, well, I met a, an investor and he has, four houses that he's renting I think he's doing an, um, two more that I will be helping him with um, come um, ending of this year beginning of next year but so he was my first or one of my first no my first one they wanted more money I couldn't get it rented I didn't understand I was learning as I go and I could not get their place rented because they wanted so much money. They didn't want you to use the E. They, they don't want babies. I was having like a tough time renting. I sent some people there, uh, a, a husband, a wife, and um, a teenager. And they're like, um, we don't like this guy. He doesn't dress properly. He doesn't seem as if, as if he's legal in the country. So we don't like him. So we're not going to rent to him. And then I, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to drop the, these people because they are too picky. So anyways, I got another one. And, 
Oh boy, it was like a lot of picky people. I got one person who was a Christian and because of the name, Faith Property Management, he contacted me, we spoke, we, I found out he's a Christian. He just, he basically hand me his home and said rent it. So I was able to rent that one for him and I was able to make a little, a little money, <laughs> a little bit, like $3,000. And I, and I got another, um, I got another one that I was able to make. So every month I was making about, um, four, four thousand five hundred i didn't make for the first couple of months i didn't make anything and i i was making a, anywhere between um four to five thousand dollars for the first three for the first the first two months so into my third to fifth month i was making about five thousand dollars per month but before all of those my first appointment to go meet this investor who has four homes to rent um i washed my car and everything and i realized i went and get it washed and i topped out the the hair in the car because it looks like um the tires one of the tire was leaking so i went and top it up the morning i woke up to go to, to to drive i wake up to drive to go to this appointment and the tie the the car was like flat to the ground and i knew it was a spiritual i, I knew it was the devil because I, he knew that this business is going to bring wealth to my family. The car was down. I took. We had a whole car that we used, and it's just an extra extra car because where we live, there's no bus, there's no taxi, so we have an extra car just in case there's any emergency and all the cars them are away. Something is home, and so I took that car and I went and I meet and it's an old car. It's a really whole car old car so i went and i was hoping that it will take me that far so anyways i went to the appointment and it went well he gave me the homes to rent and when i got back home i decided that i am going to take the car to the mechanic took the car to the mechanic they said oh you need new tires how much is it two thousand dollars oh my gosh i need to pay two thousand dollars for these tires no I think it was about seven hundred dollars to a thousand a thousand dollars for the tires, and about twelve hundred dollars or so to fix to fix whatever. So it was leaking a little bit. So I figure, you know what? Since this, I'm already take I'm taking it to the mechanic. Why not just get everything fixed? So I pay them almost two thousand dollars or about two thousand dollars to get everything fixed. I got the car excited. I'm gonna start going, meet clients, whatever, whatever. Drove the car about an hour um, from where I live, and the car started leaking even worse than how it went into the shop. And that was in February. Now it's September still cannot find out what the problem with the car is still cannot find out the issue if i didn't allow them to fix that the car would be still driving right now there was a little drip of oil and i stopped it by using the stop whatever um some some liquid that you can pour in it that you can buy over the counter and i did that and then i just figure since it's at the mechanic why not fix it it's worse than what it is and i know it's a spiritual attack he's attacking the vehicle because now he knows that i need a vehicle to get to my appointments to do my showing to meet investors or clients and do all of that so the devil start attacking my vehicle what i'm um, what like uh, uh, this is where i'm gonna stop it so you guys want to to hear the rest of the story just wait for my next video thanks hope you guys have a great day a great week and a great month